And we're live, guys. Here's the thing. I'm going to say this right away. The position of my building is making the signal horrible. Plus, my building doesn't use fiber optics. So if this is glitchy, then you guys know why. I have upgraded to the best, very best internet I can possibly pay for. So if it's glitchy, give it a rest. It tends to clear up. And if it stays glitchy, at least the audio is the most important thing because it's the message that I'm trying to get out to y'all so we can get this popping. What's up, Deborah? What's up, Haley? What is up? All right, we're in the house, right? So move this back a little bit. Do you guys know what time it is? Boom! Summertime. Um, finally, having some weird weather. Okay. So I'm gonna explain this very quickly because people on the replay, also people on the replay do not tell me how to do my live streams because I'm in my 50s and I won't listen because I'm stubborn. All right, unless it's like really something important. Now, I wanted to clear up, clear up, clear up as you guys are coming into the chat. What's up everyone? Uh, people on the replay are like, stop saying hello to people. And I'm like, these are my people, all right? I'm not gonna stop saying hello to them. But let's go into the deep dive with the information in regards to uh, keto and keto carnivore. The reason why I'm doing this, which to me it's so old, is because people keep thinking that you can eat vegetables and drink coffee on carnivore because I say keto carnivore. No, there is standard keto, which I still am against the caffeine and the nuts, right? And then we've got keto carnivore. To me, there is no other version of carnivore. You have to keep your fat up high to drive ketosis. Okay. Now, this is very, very important because I had a consultation this morning with a woman who's like, I've been doing carnivore. And I'm like, okay, well, let's go break down what you've been eating. And I saw very quickly that she was drinking decaf coffee and eating chocolate. and calling it carnivore. <laughs> Iowa. Now, you can ride the line of carnivore and you can be close to carnivore. But if you continue to have things like chocolate and some spinach and other these other things, it's not carnivore. Now, true carnivore wouldn't be adding salt to their food, although animals do lick salt rocks. The issue is with going keto carnivore or any carnivore is that electrolyte importance. The balance, and I've said this before, the balance between potassium, sodium, and magnesium is so important beyond measure. I wouldn't even suggest first time on live, awesome. Or I wouldn't even be suggesting taking salt. But with that said, our soil, you guys, is depleted of everything. And animals are not getting these high quality amounts of, of as ruminants, they're not getting high quality mag magnesium into their body from the freaking grass that they're chewing. Because our soils are depleted. So unfortunately, we gotta cheat a little bit and add a little sodium. Now, the sodium that you would add to keto carnivore, also with just standard keto, is, well, it depends on what your lifestyle is. It's summer now. I'm so used to having my other thing here. This chair should, because I like to lean on it, take pressure off my little injured knee. But if you're sweating a lot, you cannot just eat a bunch of meat without adding sodium. And then you have to be careful as to how much sodium magnesium, potassium, and water that you are introducing into your diet. Okay, we're going to the digestion, Carol. We're going to that because I'm learning a lot of stuff right now. Lots of deep diving stuff. Uh, so again, forgive me if you people, my lovely people on the replay, if it's glitchy, it tends to clear up over time. It's in the apartment that I'm living in. Either 
Uh, I, I'm actually thinking of moving out of my shoe box, so y'all be patient. Or I might be live streaming from my friend's studio where the Wi Fi is great. <laughs> Get some caviar. Cool. So, um, if you guys are sweating a lot and you're dumping too much, and okay, you add a little bit more sodium than normal, which is about five grams, which is about a teaspoon, a little less. Um, yeah, don't pound it all at once unless you have a raging headache. With, so you put in water, drink the water. But otherwise, you want to spread that sodium throughout the day. And our soil, if you're doing carnivore, you're doing it because plants have fracked you up. Okay? Otherwise, there's no other reason to do straight carnivore. And because as long as we've been eating meat, we've been eating plants. The problem is, is that we're eating these plants out of season, genetically modified, and selectively bred. So they're Frankenstein plants, all of them. And they're creating, as this person said, my gut's a mess. The plants are creating the gut mess. You know, and they'll occasional alcohol and smoking cigarettes and all this other debauchery. So um, the message that I want to get out loud and clear to you guys is, first of all, carnivore is fatty meats, not lean meat, and it's not eating two pounds of meat, okay? It's very interesting. I watched, I forgot her name. It just slipped my head right now on Tristan's channel, and they were talking about protein amounts, and you can really see that she's like, look, we don't have the data right now on how much protein people should eat. It's the same thing with people with kidney disease. If you're doing more of a carnivore version, it doesn't mean that you pound the, the protein. And that is the reason why I call it keto carnivore. You know, this whole gluconeogenesis thing, people seem to not understand it, right? Gluco, which means glucose, neo, which, which means new, and genesis may, means to create. So you're creating new blood sugar, glucose. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take your guys' questions in a second. You need to hear this in Spanish, right? Um, por el vato. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, so, um, what I'm trying to, the message that I'm trying to get across is if you're going to do carnivore, you do it because you have total digestive issues or you have autoimmunity. That's rheumatoid arthritis, it's multiple sclerosis, it's uh, uh, lupus, it's uh, fibromyalgia, um, you name it. The reproductive issues that women have with fibroids, endometriosis, cysts, and weird things growing outside the uterus for women. The estrogen dominance nonsense from being in today's modern society. Hey, Terry, long time. We miss you. Um, by the way, you guys, that's Terry. She used to be on the course page. So I run a keto, keto, standard keto, keto carnivore. And ac actually, I created a eating carbs protocol for people who've got hypoglycemia so bad. Every time, time they do keto, they feel like crap. So I've created a protocol for that. So you can learn all three by going to stephanieperson.com. And also, uh, I miss you too. Um, I do consultations, so if you guys want to book a consultation to really get this all cleared up, because what I, okay, and also you guys, I, I was just, I was just interviewed, uh, what about if you have hysterectomy, can it, uh, can it work for me? Of course, of course, absolutely. Even more so if you had a hysterectomy. And the reasons why women have hysterectomies, I mean, doctors just like to rip organs out. Poor women have no gallbladder, no thyroid, parathyroid, and no uterus. Like, they just rip stuff out. And, or gallbladder, and these, there's very simple uh, solutions for these issues, but when you don't have the information, they just surgically remove it. And Deborah's reminding you guys to book a consultation with me. You gotta go to my website at stephanieperson.com. She wrote it in caps if you don't know how to spell my friggin' name, and yes, it's my name. Uh, what could be reason for low ferritin uh, carnivore? Okay, so you gotta understand that people are doing carnivore wrong, and now, because when people did keto, Nobody understood that when you ate nuts, what would happen bad. When you didn't eat enough fat, what would happen bad to your body or too much protein or not get sleep or like have too much stress in your life, exercise late at night, eat poor quality of food, quality foods. 
people don't have the data then. So people would say like, yeah, you would just go to keto food porn sites and just download these stupid diets and people were just getting smashed with issues. Smashed, primarily thyroid issues and hypoglycemic issues. Uh, yeah, and also Deborah is reminding you guys to like up the stream and go to 70 person. No, sorry. Like a robot. Collapse the chat and then uh, hit the thumbs up and then hit the icon chat icon to reopen the chat too, to uh, continue with this. And people on the replay, just deal with it. I'm live now. So hit that notification bell and subscribe to hit me live. So if you have questions, I can speak to you directly as well. Uh, what do I, why do I get diarrhea on keto? Now, I don't know what you're eating, so should I stop with hormones? I don't believe in HRTs unless they are the very last ditch effort. Definitely not estrogen for women who are having like severe hot flashes and all kind of weird stuff. Maybe perhaps progesterone for the short term, but otherwise you want to fix the adrenal issue. That's where you're flashing from. So, and I'll get to this question. So, Keto Carnivore is, and of course, Deborah saying to subscribe to my, uh, my course on all three, Keto, Low Carb, High Fat, which is still Eat Carbs, and Keto Carnivore, StuffyPerson.com. Uh, likey, likey, <laughs> like up the stream. Okay, so essentially, um, a Keto Carnivore is like, you have to have high fat. It's the same as Keto, minus all the plants. And that's what people, plus the real push for organ meats, very much so. If you're going to do a keto carnivore, and I'm calling it keto carnivore because my version of it is very high fat. Now, because it's, it's not new to some individuals who've been doing carnivore for a while with, they can't eat plants or they're going to die. Um, but for the most people who are starting to tune, in, tune into it the last year, year and a half, uh, it's very important to get your fats up and there's not enough data. So people aren't thinking about ketosis. They're thinking about just, oh, I eat a bunch of meat. You know you don't eat a bunch of meat. If you eat a bunch of meat, it's going to make your blood sugar spike. How do I know that? Because I've worked with thousands of people over the years who eat too much protein. And their ketones drop and their blood sugar spikes and they feel like crap. So how many times do I have to explain this? You guys have to eat high fat. And then there was this like years after I'd been doing videos, people start talking about, yeah, but if I eat a bunch of fat, I can't gain, lose, lose weight. I'm like, do you guys understand? We're not trying to do starvation diet. We're trying to drive ketones that work. And you have to go through a period of training your body to adapt on a standard keto diet where you're still eating vegetables or keto carnivore. You must do that or you're going to create autoimmunity in yourself from being depleted, not getting your ratios right, your macros right, your lifestyle right, sleep right, everything right, 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 right? Keto hot flash for me. Zero hot flash, which is awesome. So a lot of people do flash on keto though, you know? A lot of women do flash and men go through depression and all kinds of low libido and testosterone drops and I see the numbers in because I keep coaching a ton of people, thousands of people, and I've done it over the years. So fats are always gonna be high, ketogenic high, over 200 grams from animal fat on carnivore. You have to take supplemental magnesium and you have to get your organs, organ meats to get the freaking darn potassium in, especially liver. It's just the way that it is. You're not going to fare well over time. It might be better than the destruction of Crohn's and diverticulitis and IBS and all of these gut and bloatedness and all these gut issues you have and whatever. But um, on keto, you still eat plants. But I really uh, started to uh, suggest a lot less plants when you're still eating keto, standard keto, when you're still being a keto omnivore. Uh, a lot less because I realized, you know, even doing carnivore myself, I'm like, yo, yo, what up with it? Steph is still good, right? Steph's like, boom, she got the business, y'all. Doosh, yes. And stop tripping you people on the replay. The reason why I even show you guys is so I have a years of video catalog, catalog of me going from my, did I start doing videos in my 30s? I think I did, or 40 to almost 52. So you've got the whole catalog and you go like, oh, stuff's starting to look bad. Stuff's starting to age. You know what I'm saying? Stuff got the keto eyes, <laughs> which the vegetable police said. <laughs> Bruh. And I'm trying to show you guys examples of hormones. So the consultation I had this morning was about trying to balance your hormones. A woman was my age exactly 
how's everyone doing? <laughs> um, I know, keto eyes. I like my keto eyes. Uh, but, uh, uh, hi, Justin. But the, the thing is, is that she was like, uh, this, this consultation obviously hit me pretty hard because I'm talking about it now on a live stream. And she's my age and we were talking about hormones and she started going into, her period stopped a, a year ago uh, before trying keto, but stopped a year ago and she's like wondering if she could restart it. And we were going over her lifestyle in the consultation because I don't just talk about diet, we talk about everything. We were talking about her sleep, we were talking about her hot flashes, we were talking about how she's got to get up at 3 a.m. to go to work. We spoke about all these things. I was like, you have you have issues with your adrenal glands. So she has adrenal issues. She has uh, potential thyroid issues and also chronic fatigue or um, adrenal. So adrenal, thyroid, and reproductive hormone, my bad, those three. And so we had to kind of establish her life and everything to understand. I'm not really taking questions at this end. So bigger carnivore eats meat uh, for, what is it? There's not a lot of potassium in just normal meat. You gotta get it from organ meat. So I'll, I'm gonna look at that comment soon uh, with potassium. It just, you just don't. And a lot of people have like cramps, headaches, heart palpitations when their, their water, sodium, potassium, magnesium is off. So it's very important that the electrolytes or you get them suckers in right. So, uh, what's up, Arlie? All right, so um, now with keto, I'm going to suggest that you mainly cook your vegetables and if you want to have a salad, do it from time to time for people who don't have really hardcore histamine intolerance, leaky gut, or autoimmunity to just not do raw the majority of the time and cook your vegetables and much less. I mean, if you only had vegetable, vegetables in one meal, you could, okay? You don't have to just constantly make vegetables all day and like, you know, feel like you've got a variety. That's what's easy about carnivore, right? Keto carnivore is like easy. I get this, I get like six different kinds of meat and I load up on all of them. This kind of meat, that kind of meat, and I learn how to cook it so it's so juicy. You have no friggin' idea. All right. Now I'm gonna take your guys' comments and questions and we're gonna roll with it. Yes, to book a consultation, go to stephanieperson.com. Deal with the old stuffer. Oh, seeking truth in Christ. Thank you for donating to the Super Chat Chat. What do you think about granular therapy? Moreover, what do you think about shellfish? So I'm not very huge on promoting anything in the sea because it's so polluted. But what do you mean by saying granular? Like, like, like what? For the thyroid, what? What do you mean? Be more specific with your question. And yes, my consultations are amazing. Thank you, Deborah, for saying that. Yes, I think so. I've done thousands, you guys. So here's the thing. I did, I had an interview a couple days ago with High Intensity Health. So look for that coming to his channel. And it's Mike, Mike Mutzel. And like, I've always admired him, always. So I'm always like, this dude is so smart, right? Always. And he's, and I was looking at his videos and then he started following me on Instagram and I didn't really follow him back because I try not to see things like David Goggins, right? David Goggins follows nobody on Instagram. It's just because I'm too hyper connected to people and I don't want to sit and just look at every, like sit there for like 30 minutes, binge watching everything that they do. Although I would love to follow him, but you know. Bot liver from U.S. Wellness Meats, and it's good, but it was shipped in styrofoam. And can you recommend a small order company who ships uh, official use? There's a company. There's a, a farm that I um, that I found in uh, Southern California. It's called. Oh, I'm so bad. It's called. Darn it, oh, you guys. I'm so bad. It's called. Grass. No. Valley, why can't I remember? And then and like all the information's on my phone and I'm live streaming on my phone. I will put in the notes below, but they are, what's it called? Um, something Valley. Anyway, they are starting, they're thinking about starting to ship. And I talked to the, the uh, cattle rancher myself and I bought a bunch of liver from him and it was super cheap. It was five bucks a pound, bruh. Five bucks. 
and he was selling heart for five bucks a pound. This was up. The name, what's the name? Oh, I can't stand when I can't remember certain things. I need to, you know what you guys, I'll do recorded video on the company and their products and he gave me all stuff not purchasable for um, y'all, but I got it. <laughs> I'm super stuck. But anyway, here's a point. Um, uh, I am um, taking my questions maybe. So I don't know of any other companies that are doing non-styrofoam. Now there is, was the uh, Lasada. I didn't order from them because I didn't like the fact that they charge 50 bucks. They make you order 40 pounds of it, which is $200. So they make you pay $200 worth plus $50 shipping. So it's not, and the, beef, or the liver was $5 a pound, but it really isn't if you're paying for all that shipping. If you're gonna order that much food and you have to order it, then shipping, shipping, their shipping agreements, like it should be free. And I don't know how they package it, if it's in styrofoam or not. I don't know. Uh, sirens, yes, all the time. Uh, yes, yeah, so I was interviewed by Mike Mutzel, and he interviews a lot of people. And the reason why I like watching his channel is because he interviews people that have nothing to do with keto. It's just like people who study the microbiome of the gut. And one of his recent interviews was talking about men and prostate issues. And, um, and he was against, the guy he interviewed was inter against intermittent fasting because he thought it compromised your immune system, which I do too. But I'll go to his channel for that kind of stuff. The keto stuff, yeah, no. You know. But I really love his, and he's smart as frack, man. Every doctor that he talks to feels like, I feel like he knows more than they do. Smash that like button, right? Right, Keishel? Thank you for saying to smash the like button. We got 50 people in the house and only 29 likes. And you know something's going on with my YouTube algorithm because I used to have 200 people. Now it's down because people aren't getting the notifications when I go live, which is so frustrating. Um, and I think the only reason why Deborah gets it is because she's a, a, a moderator. And so she'll get the... But a lot of people aren't getting it. So to get my algorithm up, y'all need to smash that like button, people. And also people on the uh, replay. Okay. Yes, honey. You're right, Keychell? Yeah. Whoa. All right. So my um, tripod wanted to fall on my face. That's what happens when you're live, people. <laughs> I'm like, like up the stream and like three people liked it up. Come on, guys. There's only... Um, uh, I, I don't check to see who's liking it. So if you're like, oh, she thinks I like her, but I don't want to show that I like her. I'm not even checking. It just helps. Thank you, Seeking. Was it truth? Well, yes, yeah, so, and you did, donated to Super Chat, so I appreciate it. Um, what was your question too, by the way? I already forgot if I can go to therapy. Okay, so let's see here. But I hope you're okay. <laughs> Thanks. And the tripod wanted to kiss. Yeah, by giving me a bump on my head. Poking my eyeball out. Um, so, um, yeah, okay, so he interviewed me, and this is what I wanted to say. Um, having abdomen, what? I'm having a lean abdomen more to do with hormones than calorie restriction. Yes, it's all about hormones. It's not about restricting. If I restricted, I would, you know, okay, I could look so freaking shredded. And you guys know that I have shown a picture of me when I'm freaking yoked, shredded, shredded, like 9% body fat, just lean as frack, no boobies, no butt. And now I'm sorry. I like having a little boobage. Okay. I like having a little bit. And I like having a little good dunk, good dunk. Okay, I'm not ready to let it go. So for me, sitting as a woman, sitting around uh, 13 to 14 percent body fat, perfect. Don't want to go any lower because that's when the skin gets really thin. You might compromise the collagen in your skin. 
and uh, you start looking vascular and like really, really cut. And I still want to look soft. Fabulous. So that's not my deal. But um, with, with uh, Mike, um, we spoke about coffee. Everyone like on that, I, I, if you guys check out my last video I uploaded, it was like a little teaser of the actual interview. Um, but uh, we spoke about, we did speak about intermittent fasting and we did speak about coffee. So people are like, just so you know, he's all into the OMAD, like, which is like one meal a day. He's all into one OMAD and he's all into coffee. And I was like, D I know, duh. <laughs> and we spoke about that. And you know what, you guys? I said some stuff he didn't think about. I love it. I was like, mm -mm, mm -mm. I said some stuff. I said something from a different perspective. And he's like, I love that. So we had a great, great conversation. He's a wonderful person and uh, took the time to come here to LA to give stuff for an interview. He's from Oregon, I think. When I was 18, I went to Columbus, Ohio at, at the eight, what, at the children's hospital. They took blood days, blood, what blood and days later I found out that I have an extra chromosome disorder. Oh. So what are you, what, what are you, are you trying to ask something particular? I'm not really sure. So I don't know, right now I'm just seeing if I missed any questions. What could be the reason for low ferritin on carnivore on carnivore? So basically your sex hormones drop when you don't get enough fat in and your body's like, you're just being exposed to a lot of meat and people on carnivore, like they're afraid of fat. So they start pounding down the meat. And they're not even getting the fattiest cuts of meat because there's this dogma and stigma. Um, and you have to add extra fat on top of the meat fat because on, on a keto carnivore, you just can't rely on the meat fat. Like if I were to take the heart, let me grab a heart so you guys can see that I can't rely on just the meat fat. Hold on. Hold on. Wait a minute. Let's get some heart. All right. So I don't want to put the information up here because this is not for, for retail sell. So as you can see here, can you guys see the fat? That's, that's heart. So if you guys are wondering what heart looks like, it's not that scary. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, don't freak out. Uh, I'll show the back side. Okay, so this is not enough fat to be ketotic. That's a lot of fat, you guys. And when you cook it, it gets very soft. It's not, especially, heart tastes just like steak. So it doesn't have the bitterness of kidney or liver. Um, Deborah says a book of consultation, go to 70 Oh, that's old. Uh, 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 uh. Let's see here. Yes, I felt the earthquake. And yes, I'm safe. You guys, I was in that huge earthquake and like, what was it? The 80s or 90s? 90s? Like this one was like this, whatever. I'm like, when the big one hits, you get knocked onto your butt, which is what happened years ago. I, I literally fell on my butt and the whole apartment was like this. It was like, brrr. so if it's only, brrr, you know, you're good. Um, so this is heart. And as you guys can see, to be ketotic, this is not, this is not enough fat. Nope. And this does not look gross. Looks like steak, right? It looks like a round steak. So um, this, I, I would eat this and add another uh, 45 grams of fat or three tablespoons on top of this, of like either lard, tallow, or I like butter. I love me some butter. Let's see here, boom, boom, boom. All right. Um, what do we got? What do we got? Let's see, I mean, animal glands used to repair. That's what I thought you meant. Um, I thought you meant like the thyroid glands. Is that I, is that what you mean? Thyroid. So the owner of is example of someone who ate animal kidney or kidney improve. Kidney. Uh, I don't think that eating kidney improves kidney function, but I know that it helps production of the, your diamine oxidase. Um, 
a lot of people have got kidney dis disease if it's not from um, alcohol, cigarettes, drug addiction, pharmaceuticals that you're taking, that really creates the kidney disease. Then it could be from the oxalates that are in plants and you have to remove the oxalates and um, as to try to heal the kidneys as best as possible. Now I was on my keto carnivore low carb high fat course uh, somebody was asking me about can a person with kidney disease do carnivore? I'm like, of course. In fact, there's not a lot of information proving that eating protein will damage the kidneys more because the kidneys do filter the protein. Although I'm really on the fence because I have had clients eat too much protein um, that um, feel a little bit of pain in their back, but it could be due to also not enough water. People can also damage their kidneys from not drinking enough water, which so many people drink soda as water, and that's not going to help you. Carrie says, are you concerned that living in such a busy place affects your health? You mean busy? You mean dirty? You mean smoggy? Yeah, I do. I do. <laughs> like, I do. And I don't plan to live here forever. I'm here for now, but... When you live in a dirty city like I do, you just have to make sure that you, you, you yourself are running as clean as possible so you can try to combat, uh, you know, the, 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 uh, the oxidation of all of the damage. So if you're giving your cells a lot of nutrients to repair the oxidation, then my age isn't going to... Obviously, you guys are in my 50s. Come on. One thing that Mike said is like, oh, 50s is a new 40. I'm like, what? 40? What 40-year-olds 40 40 year look like this, Brad? No, you tripping. Yeah, there are some, but you really want 50 to be the new, new 30s. I was like, who cares for 10 years, Brad? 50s, new 40s. I was 40s a couple of years ago. No. We want to protect our DNA. We want to experience autophagy. We want to experience cellular cleanup. We want to experience methylation so to deal with the, the the smog that's what i have to do myself chicken liver bought the chicken liver awesome Let's see hidden carbs in what for in what liver by the way if you guys don't want your carbs to get too high which can mess with your blood sugar don't overcook your liver because there's quite a lot of carbs in it so you want it to be lightly sauteed or eat it eat it raw You guys have any more questions before I so I really wanted to make clear the difference it's the cruciferous family which do have oxalates and phytates so it's uh, you know it's the gamut of, of different types of cruciferous like broccoli cauliflower cabbage asparagus which I guess is not supposed to be I, I heard it was a grain actually asparagus Brussels sprouts uh, the green spinach, but spinach is super high in oxalates. You've got to prepare it a certain way. If you don't want shards of glass in your vaginas, your urethra, or in your kidneys. And yes, you should eat kidney. Kidney is really great for, it's amazing. Kidney is so amazing for histamine intolerance, you guys, and leaky gut, because it helps to restore the diamine oxidase enzyme that gets depleted from Drinking coffee, drinking alcohol, drink eating sugar, carbs, junk, pharmaceuticals that downregulate your stomach acids and then you lose your diamine oxidase and then you start developing all these food allergies, seasonal allergies, puffiness, like your whole body goes to the crapper when you can't regulate histamine because histamine swells you up. And that's why a lot of you guys are like big huge Buddha bellies because of potentially not having enough stomach acid enough proteolase, prote protease, protease, not proteolase, and uh, enough things like diamine oxidase break down uh, the histamine. You're supposed to have histamine, but you're supposed to break it down. When you're not breaking it down, you swell, and swell, and swell, and swell, and swell, and swell, and swell. So kidney granular is great for that. Kidney, people take, you know, bovine uh, 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 thyroid, pig thyroid, and also people will use... Uh, gallbladder salts for granular for people who've got gallbladder issues or sludge or stones or no gallbladder 
even if you need to or not. I'm knocking this thing all over the place. Sorry, guys. So do you guys have any more questions before I go? Because we've hit the 35-minute mark. How do I start fixing my adrenal gland? Okay, so your adrenals sit right here, right? They're right there, the size of little green peas. Tiny little suckers, it's tiny. And what I don't like is that you guys don't realize they're so small, your adrenal glands are your emergency gas tank, right? That you're only supposed to access about 10 times a month. You're not supposed to access these things 10 times a day or 40 times a day. Caffeine, dark chocolate, which has caffeine, like not sleeping, like just not taking, excuse me, any rest, working out when you're exhausted. These things will literally, your body's like, I'm sorry, I'm tired. And you're like, well, my body needs to keep going for whatever reason. And so your body will have to start accessing adrenaline. And what happens is adrenaline and cortisol become slow acting now in the morning. That's why you wake up tired. And so I often have people break the fast because you know I'm against all the intermittent fasting. Garbage! Okay. And a lot of you guys have adrenal insufficiencies, which I spoke about with my, yeah, if you have adrenal issues, if you have thyroid issues or hypoglycemia, why would you freaking intermittent fast? Um, they're actually from, no, where, 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 Idaho? It's been about two weeks since our consultation. I've been noticing my stool floats. What do I need to do? So actually, either you need to try oxbile because it could be your um, gallbladder or betaine HCL. And if that doesn't, one of those should work. And if that doesn't, you're going to have to make sure that you eat your fat with protein and not in a tea or a broth or a fat bomb. That should get your stool to stop floating as much. Instead, you have a couple little pieces floating, right? Most of it goes to the bottom of the toilet, which you want. You don't want stuff to float because that means you are malabsorptive and you're, you're hemorrhaging stuff that you need. Um, I'm 5'10", weigh 427 pounds. I have high insulin but low blood sugar. I'm fat but got a lot of lean muscle too. Do you have any advice for how to get leaner? Um, consultation because you, you, you over 400. Yeah, it's way more. I don't know you. So I don't know what you've done. I don't know if you have a work schedule. I don't know if you have any joint pain, back pain. I don't know nothing. And so I've learned, like, you want to give out advice, you should sign up for a consultation or you should go do my course because I'm very active there. You can access me with questions there and I can be like, okay, give me your profile. Like, what's, what's up? I also do many consultations on Sunday on the course page. But I, I don't know what you're doing. I don't know if you've tried keto. I don't know for how long. I don't know if you eat carbs. I don't know if what your cravings are. I don't know if you got sleep apnea. Like, I don't know. I don't know what your testosterone is that. I like, I don't know. Yeah, Dustin, oh yeah, Deborah saying you should try consultation. Uh, which nutritional plan is the low carb, high fat on your website? Um, I haven't created one yet. I will create one. Be patient. It's coming. Low, bar, low carb high fat plan is coming. All of them are being revamped and uploaded onto the site. The pl meal plans are still good. They're just not having the newest information I have. So if you, if you guys can't wait, just go ahead and download one and pay for it now because you're going to get good guidelines. But otherwise, you would wait to get even more solid information. Okay. Definitely consider a consultation because I can actually sit down with you on some kind of video chat like Skype or whatever, FaceTime or whatever, and actually break it down like I become hyper-focused on you as an individual and go over everything. We go over your past history, weight gain, any health issues, your stool quality, your, your digestive issues, your if you've had any blood test tubes, you know, check out your sex hormones, if you have any other issues, if you have sciatica, if you have back pain, if you've got any bulging discs, if you have any arthritis, if you have any type of inflammation, heartburn, you name it, we go through it. <laughs> Let's see, yes, um, they are absolutely worth it. Yes, Ashley is saying, because she had a consultation with me. You asked the second question, right, Ashley? Let me check it out. 
Are you concerned living in such a place? Oh, I already read that. Okay, where's Ashley? Ashley. Uh, is there... Okay. Oh, oh, you only did one... Wait. Oh, see my turn. Oh, yeah, the adrenal stuff. That's what I was at. Um, yes, Ashley's reminding you guys that it's worth it. I'm not telling anybody to, to do this. These are my live streams, you guys. So, that's what I love. People are always are asking me, where do you get your information from? And I'm like, uh, the thousands of people I work with? I mean, one plus one is two people. You can look at studies all day long. Who, who were the subjects? Oh, we don't know. How did they live their life? Oh, we don't know. And that's what I hate about these studies because I can take all the people on my course page and take a couple hundred people and be like, oh, they're all doing Stephanie's plan. This person did crappy. That person did amazing. And it doesn't matter. It matters who the individual is. How, how much did they apply the information? Like where they are, metabolic damage from before all plays a role on if I have everybody do carnivore and 20% of the people do well and 20% of the people do crappy, it's because we're all different. And that's what I hate about studies. Ugh. Yes, the con chase, yes, they're open. So you could go to my site uh, and book a consultation. I have them my mornings, I live in LA, my mornings, afternoons, afternoon and weekends. So the different times should be able, you should be able to hit one of those times and dates. Welcome, Monique. Still crashing after eating. Oh, because you have hypoglycemia. It's called reactive hypoglycemia. Can people look like a pro, pro bodybuilder without pharmaceuticals and supplements? No. No. So I'm a woman, right? There are female bodybuilders. And I have I have a lot of different ethnicities in me. But one, uh, one that I have is Waluba Waluba African. Okay, so... Uh, which we tend to have shorter muscle bellies, and that's the reason why a lot of black people tend to be more, look, look more muscular. I am in my 50s, you guys. I've been doing keto for almost 12 years. No sugar, no carbs, no nothing, no refeeding, no alcohol, no caffeine, no smoking a cigarette. Not that, no, no, none of it. And um, uh, yes, you can see that I lift, right? You see the muscular development? This is really crappy light. Um, but. This is as big as I'm gonna get, okay? I, I, can, I If I wanna stay at this lean body mass and I train harder, I'm just gonna get fatter. Uh, if I train harder than I'm doing now, I might get a little bit more, uh, more defined in the muscle, but I'm not gonna get much bigger. So no. And I get, I, I, I get, women are like, eh, I don't like to, I don't like to lift cause it's like, you know, I, I get muscle easy and I'm like, and I'm looking at this flabby ass woman telling me she gets muscle easy. And I'm like, you know who you're talking to, right? Like, what? Like, I look at weights and I gain muscle. So I'm not going to get much bigger than this, is what I'm trying to tell people. No, it's not going to happen. No. And I got really good genes for building muscle, like, everywhere. You name it. If I wanted to train my, my traps, I could build my traps. They're not big now because I don't like big traps on women. Or on me, as a woman. I don't care about anybody else. Whatever. Uh, how can I start keto? Um, watch my video series. <laughs> That's a huge subject. How many days a week do you recommend working out? So I think that you should work out no less than four days a week, but I really think people should do five. And if you have adrenal fatigue, which this woman was asking before, how do you fix adrenal fatigue? That's another huge loaded subject. So it's about going to bed extra early using blue blockers, using magnesium, diaphragmatic breathing, meditating. Um, it is de-stressing, exercising the right time, connecting to the circadian rhythm, and knowing when to get off the gas pedal. If your body's saying no, don't keep pushing on the gas pedal. Like adding coffee and powering through a work day when you're exhausted and taking kids to, freaking, kids to soccer practice at six in the evening. That's how you destroy your adrenals. Or like trying to get work done and like, no, 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 I'll just work for six hours or staying up till 3 a.m. working or watching TV. That's how you blow your adrenals out and eating foods that make you crash. How many IZ? Sorry, I didn't get that. Kimberly, do you think hydro hydroxy? No, it's dangerous as frack. You don't want to do anything like that. You just want to do everything naturally. And what I think about, what I love about me being on the internet is you guys know that I am in my 50s. So it is possible to maximum, maximize your DNA, your epigenetics, but it takes a lot of discipline. And it's not, this is not genetics, you guys. This is like 
relentless hard work. So people are like, oh, you ever take a week off from working out? And I'm like, I've never gone over one week of working out in my entire 22 years or almost 23 years of being in the gym. I've never stopped, even on all those trips, Cambodia, Africa, South America, Iceland, Australia, Bali, this, that, blah, 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 blah. No, I don't take a day off. I don't get tired. Because I got some energy, 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 energy. Uh, no, so um, people don't understand, like, you know, I lift six days a week. I ride my bike. I don't even like to drive. So if you work hard, right? If you know better, you do better. If you work hard, you're going to get the results. If you try to cheat your way into things, it's never going to work out the way you want to, especially as you get older. That's what's key. We've got 70 people in the house. All right. How can I fix stomach lining issues? Uh, I don't know what you're doing. I mean, people like to use slippery elm. So if you have an ulcer, if you have peptic ulcer, slippery, slippery elm may work. May just make sure you have no tree uh, type of allergies. Uh, slippery elm, uh, people say glutamine, but I haven't seen it work in people yet. Slippery elm definitely coats the mucus lining of your pipes. Uh, Licorice DGL, but licorice is not the best. I think it has oxalates, it's not good for the kidneys. Uh, how many ounces of meat per meal can I eat as, are you, okay. Um, I don't know how tall you are. Like, if I tell you this way, every woman's gonna eat the same. How active are you? Do you hit the gym? How old are you? Um, but I always say between ranges from 45 to 60 grams of protein, depending on your activity level and how tall you are and your lean mass, which means how much muscle you have compared to fat. How can I keep a low carb diet? So if you want to stay on low carb, you would add things like, unfortunately, white rice. I don't like, I mean, white rice because uh, all of the poison has been bleached out. People don't understand there's arsenic and poison and phytates in brown rice. Uh, I would use white rice, anything that's white. They say, stay away from the whites. But believe it or not, the whites are what save you. I'm not kidding. Um, I really prefer that you not be on carbs. Now, some people have nightshade issues. They have oxalate issues, so therefore they couldn't eat sweet potato. But sweet potato would be another starch that would be doable. Um, if you don't have issues with, like, yellow squash, anything with seeds is also a problem with lectins. Uh, carrots berries if you have no uh, issue with those foods those would be your carbs maybe bleached out like yeah instant oats i'm not kidding the more you bleach out these grains the more poison you bleach out so instead of even instead of eating your still cut nonsense and your whole wheat whatever you would eat bleach but you shouldn't even eat wheat because of all of the gluten in there and that's a hot freaking mess bleached or not uh, thoughts on sunscreen and cancer from the sun. Is it real? I was born with kidney issues. Should we be drinking water? Thank you for reminding me. Okay. Yes, please drink water. Okay, what do you need to know about your kidney issues? I don't know what type of kidney issues you have. So that's quite interesting. Um, <laughs> sunscreen. So um, I use... Uh, a non-paraben, non, uh, uh, what is it? Non-paraben, non-chemical sunscreen, uh, on my face only, um, because of melasma, which you guys can't see that well, because it's going away a little bit. Um, but yeah, on my body, I, I, I was just outside for about 45 minutes, trying to get my, my little, my drumsticks nice and tan. Okay, so when I sit in the sun, I really expose everything but the face. And then I just put sunscreen on the face. I don't put sunscreen anywhere else. You know, and I am of a brown descent, so you don't see me like this at the beach. So, you know, which a lot of people are like, I mean, oh, this is genetics that you don't, that you're not wrinkly. And I'm like, well, I'm also not wrinkly because 
when I was growing up in Cali, my of, you know, Eurocentric friends, right? My white sisters, yes, honey, they were like baking in the sun, baby oil and like on the face and no sunscreen. And, and so they all wrinkly now, all of them. And I was like, you know, when I was younger, I was like, I don't want to look too dark, you know, because that's what happens to the black mind. We get all messed up. Like, I don't want to look too dark. It's so funny because I used to be about 50,000 shades darker than I used to am now. <gasps> um, but I wasn't trying to get tan. Like I would you go out, I go outside and I get tan. So that has also preserved my collagen. Okay, what should, okay, should we eat cru wait, cruciferous on winter season? Exactly. That's the thing that's very, very interesting. If you don't have gut issues and you don't need to go carnivore, keto carnivore, then when you do eat your vegetables, it's so much better to just eat them in season. And that is what I did talk about with Mike. I said, doesn't it make more sense that you're purging out the oxalate, you're purging out all of this, these poisons in winter months? I even talked to my mom about it today because my mama grew up on a farm, okay, in Tennessee. And uh, I was born, uh, she took me out here and I was born in LA. Whoa, David, what's up? People donating to the Super Chat. It's been a hot minute. So let's see what David says. Uh, he says, is it true that keto, that, that keto diet is so muscle sparing that you can go very low carb between six and 800, what? Huh? What, I'm confused. Keto diet, <laughs> let me see. Muscle sparing that you can go very low calories. Oh! calories between six and eight hundred daily i'm 170 when i'm lean six foot tall how many grams of fat and protein should i aim for daily thanks okay thank you david um okay so david um key key okay let's explain blah, 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 blah. let's explain and again, if it's glitchy, I'm really sorry, you guys. I'm sorry if it's glitchy on the replay. I'm really sorry. My building is just giving me horrible Wi-Fi. Um, so I might have to stream other places. But, uh, and I'll take this question and answer David's question. Okay. So basically, the reason why I can spare, you guys see, I can grow muscle. And um, because of being fully ketotic and not having carbs for years is because... My insulin is low, right? My A1C, my insulin, my insulin is low, my glucose is low. And so that makes my insulin sensitive, meaning I only need a little bit of insulin to do big job because insulin stores fat, but it also deliver, delivers the protein that you eat into the cells, the muscle cells so that they can grow. And so because I am ketotic, uh, as you guys can see, I'm accessing, this is the restaurant, this is the restaurant of my body, right? That's where the restaurant is, or women, it's all in this, this, this song, except we don't, women don't want it here. They want it on the thighs, and they want it here. So I have a restaurant here that my body can access this body fat. And so being ketotic means I'm not going to be eating my bicep to feed my brain. Because when you're glucose dependent, your body will go into gluconeogenesis, break down amino acids from your body when you're a carb person, when you miss that window of glycogen storage. So you want the glycogen to be filled up with gasoline, right? You're putting gas into the tank, you're filling up your glycogen, and then you do a bunch of stuff in a day and you, you bring it down and then you should eat again. So you don't start going into gluconeogenesis, which is a breakdown of muscle to feed the brain with glucose. So... As I walk around all day long, if I'm not eating, my body's not taking amino acids from my skin and collagen and from my butt, my boobs, and my men, they take it from the, the legs and the muscle of the muscles in the legs. And so then I can grow, right? So because I'm protein sparing. So when I lift, I'm not constantly, constantly catabolic, I'm more anabolic. And because I'm eating a high cholesterol diet, my sex hormones are like, Girl, thank you. My sex hormones are getting all of the, the, the great nutrients that they need to grow. And I'm eating organ meats and a good quality protein. 
And that's how you grow. You can't eat six or 700 calories a day because if I do, my body will go into gluconeogenesis. You can't eat six to 800 calories a day is like, you know, like a couple slabs of butter and like, you know, that's not even one meal. For a man who's one, you know, is 170 pounds, six foot tall. And if you wanna be lean and shredded at six foot, like and be developed and have muscle, you need to be like 180 at least. Now I'm on a 170 is too small. 170 is the perfect example of probably not having size and probably not having nice developed quads and big legs. That's not what we want. We want nice developed legs. Okay, let me see. So I hope that helps answer the question. Let me see if, what else did he say? Um should I aim for, what should I aim for? Oh, so your protein should be, I don't know. I, I don't know how old you are and I don't know how active you are, but if you're 170 at six foot, you're probably active, but you should probably have your protein around 85 to 90 grams of protein a day, depending on how much you lift and on the days that you lift. And then you want to have your fats around 250, 250 to 300. And uh, that's what you want. I hope that helps. Yeah. Okay, Rob, depending on your size, you can eat a, uh, uh, any, blah, 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 blah. you can be eating up to 150 grams of carbs a day and still be, no, that's not true, Jose, you, Sanchez, you are dead wrong. You eat 150 grams of carbs, you are nowhere near ketotic, my darling. You ain't even live near ketotic if you have 50 carbs, bruh. That is a straight up not true, and I can prove that all day long. I've got 100 freaking notepads of all the consultations I've done over the years proving that wrong with people using a uh, glucometer and writing down all their symptoms. That is not true. That is not true. That's why I don't like some people coaching other people on this chat chat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> okay. Don't we need gluconeogenesis in the liver to provide the brain? To yeah. Yeah, of course. That's why when you're testing your blood sugar, uh, so I call it hypergluconeogenesis. That means your body uh, going into gluconeogenesis when it doesn't need to. Okay, so we need gluconeogenesis for the red blood cells. That's it. Okay, so when you're testing your blood sugar, you're going to have a blood sugar of zero. You're going to be dead. A blood sugar of 400, you're going to die soon. So if you have a blood, a blood sugar between 69 to 82, three-ish max milligrams per deciliter of glucose, then you get enough for your blood blood. Blood, uh, uh, red blood cells, but your blood sugar is low enough to create enough ketones that your body and your brain start running off of ketones as well, primarily ketones, okay? Which also can get into the Krebs cycle. Are you welcome, David? Uh, what's up, Steph? What's up, Teresa? How much butter is too much? There's no too much because your body's going to be like, okay, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I can go through a whole block of Kerrygold of butter, which is 227 grams. 227 grams, which is like, I think almost like around 2000 calories a day and stay this lean, straight up. No joke. Uh, can you use coconut oil? No, 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 no MCT oil period. I know you used to talk about it, but we've evolved and, and coconut oil only for its lauric acid benefits. So brain injuries, uh, my microbes feeling cold, uh, he, um, dealing with colds and flus, but otherwise keto is about animal fat point blank period. And I've changed you guys because I've learned from the clients. People aren't adapting on the darn MCT oil, coconut oil. It's a waste of money. They've completely lied to you as we've been lied to forever. What do you mean you saw me on the Steve Harvey show? No, you saw me on Dr. Oz show. I've never been on the Steve Harvey show. What you mean, Monique? You didn't see me on no Steve Harvey show unless he brought me up. Steve Harvey show. What? Although uh, I think he got canceled. Yeah, you saw him get Dr. Oz. Monique clearly is not white. Okay. What's up, my sis? Um, what's up, Whitney? Is it possible adapting a keto diet if I'm high carb body type? There's no such thing as a high carb body type. I don't want this stuff in the background. Right? There is no such thing as a high carb body type. 
Period. We are mammals, people. We're animals. We're designed to live outside. We're not designed to sit in chairs, on beds, sit on sofas, and, and, and use electricity. We're designed to live outside, and outside there's no high carb. High carb comes from freaking grains and wheat and stuff from farming. And our bodies are getting jacked, messed up. Nobody's a high carb person. That is a complete myth, and that's why so many people are sick. And if you're young eating high carb, when you get as old as I do in your 50s, you're going to look busted if you keep doing high carb. It's just the way it is. Because carbs create a thing called advanced glycation end product, which damages the protein lining of cells. It destroys it. It, it makes cells misfire, age you, wrecks your DNA. That's what high carb does to everybody. Period. <laughs> How many total carbs in, in grams? For what? A day? Uh, probably 20 carbs. That's like some broccoli and some, you know, you get some cauliflower and some broccoli, you know? If you're doing total, if you're doing net, you know what I'm saying? You do like a cup or two. Uh, you like really putting in little dots, Craig. What's up with that? Okay. Uh, <laughs> what about uh, herbs, herbs on carnivore diet instead of veg? Nah, I would just do like, yo, if you're doing carnivore because you've got any type of illness, itis, inflammation, uh, digestive issues, uh, I would never ever add herbs. You would just do salt and meat and fat called day. No, salt, fat, and meat. It's never meat first. It's always fat first because that's where the vitamins are and minerals. You're amazing. We appreciate you. How much water should we drink? It depends on if you're a man or a woman or if it's summer or winter, if you're sweating or sweating up. So it's like between two and three liters a day. Sipped throughout the day because if you don't sip it throughout the day you can dehydrate dehydrate yourself trying to catch up by drinking a liter all at once that don't that don't get you hydrated honey child it takes almost an hour for that stuff to get into the cells anyway why is it when i'm always about to go people are finding me it's not fair i do not like salt on meat then don't eat it you know, drink some salt water if you need your electrolytes. But you, you can't go saltless, honey. No. We need enough sodium in this diet. Not unless you want to get cramped up and locked up. Uh, thank you much for you. Thank you, Deborah, for um, answering some of the questions I can't see because now they're coming in faster. Jose, okay, thank you very much for your response, but I feel physically tired eating low carb even after eating. It's because you're doing it long, wrong, Jose. You should do a consultation. If you do it right, you want to have some energy, 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 energy. Look, you got to do it right, though. Getting a little adrenal fatigue. You're exactly what I'm saying. People who are doing these things wrong, I swear, it's my Johnny Carson background. Only people my age group know who Johnny Carson is. So sad time goes by that that's a truth. But, um, yeah, if you do things wrong, you're going to feel tired because your glycogen is depleted. You're not using ketones. And then your adrenals start going, I'm freaking out, bro. I'm exhausted. It's a hot mess. Then you start going into hypergluconeogenesis, and your legs get that skinny, bro. Little sticks. Little sticks. The mother little keto fitness people aren't telling you about the stick effect on men. And women have their period missing. Ain't nobody talking about that. Just a little step. Don't forget to like up the stream, guys. Don't forget to like up the stream. You got claps chat. Hit thumbs up. Then see the chat window. Click on it and re-enter the chat. Because this little humble channel is needing some love. Previous question. What was this? Uh, about adrenal and glycogen. What about it? Don't know. You gotta remember, questions go like this, and then if you don't catch it, you miss it. Let's see here. Previous question about adrenal and glycogen. Um, I try to remember. Steph, you uh, have you consulted with Stephen Finney and Jeff? Je I mean Jeff. Wait. Bullock. Over carnivore, as they have been quiet on it. Uh, okay, so I talked to Mike. So it's really weird. Like these keto people. They don't like the carnivore stuff. It's not in their wheelhouse. 
they don't study it, they don't know about it, and often they call it carnivore. That's not what I do. I push keto carnivore of high fat, no vegetables, high fat, moderate to low protein keto carnivore to get into ketosis. And the reason why they don't talk about it, these like older guys that are like really awesome, Jeff Bullock. I don't think his, his, his name's not spelled like Joff. Anyway, um, they don't know about it. So if they're not commenting, they don't know. And when I talked about Mike, he doesn't know enough about it. So what is he going to say? He, he said, I tried it and I didn't like it. And like, you're not going to learn if you try it and like it and then don't do it again. You got to try and try and work with people, 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 which is what I'm doing. And now I've got a ton of people on carnivore that I either coach or on my course page or have them do standard keto or have them do carbs. I'm trying to learn it all, right? Because y'all come with different issues <laughs> or wants or needs or whatever. Uh, thank you, KGS. What is it? Munford Dog Training. I love dogs. I love dogs. Um, aw, thank you. And she writes, thank you for all you do. Thank you so much. Stephanie, you carnivore? I've been doing carnivore a long time, child. What you talking about? What you talking about? See, Craig, it's for me, I've been doing this keto thing for so long. If I don't eat veggies, it's like one less thing I got to cook. You know what I'm saying? Like, who cares? Like, but I might oscillate between the two, between veggies and carnivore. But now I'm straight kind of more straight. Yeah, it's 15 what five years now five years did you stop so Jose binge watch her videos and her consider doing a consultation with her to get customized plan and that's probably the best thing or you can you guys can go to my keto carnivore page or my Instagram which is Stephanie ketogenic um, to get more information because on my Instagram I'm constantly putting up information on my stories every day it's kind of exhausting the course is exhausting my consultations are, oh, they're a lot of work, but I love it. Don't you know you don't need vegetables? Vegetables have poison. All plants have poison. All plants, because when I say anti-nutrients, you guys are like, you guys don't know the salicylates and oxalates and goitrogens and nightshades, opponents, tenants, xanthems, gluten. You know, you guys don't know about all that stuff. And so I just call it poison because that's what it is. A plant has a defense. It has its own internal pesticide, which is poison. And when you're eating this stuff in the right growth, wrong growth state, and you guys are um, getting stuff imported from South America in the winter time, you can't get a break from the poisons. You get jacked. People are primarily super anaphylactic to, besides eggs and, and, and dairy sometimes, to plants, not animals. Where's the book? I'm writing it. I don't want to release my book until I've gotten everything covered and I'm so close. But it's coming, it's coming. It's coming, it's really good. I'm like, something I'm really gonna be proud of. If I had released it before, I would not be proud of it. Um, all fiber is toxic. No, it's not, that's not true, that's much crap. Come on now, not all fiber is toxic. Um, plants have medicinal purposes but you're not supposed to need fiber to take a dump, okay? And fiber does, is it is a prebiotic for the probiotic to attach to. So people who've destroyed their gut, if they use it for the short term without scratching their colon, it can be beneficial. Uh, but nobody needs fiber because it is not a nutrient, okay? Nobody needs it just if they have a good gut and, or they, if they can poop. You shouldn't have to need fiber to take a dump at all. Just need fat. At summer, I'm supposed to worst moment to try high fat with, with my note. Oh, of course. Perfect time. Anytime. Right now is the right time. What are you talking about? You can't wait. I know, right? I'm so excited for the book. Like, I've learned so much, you guys. You don't even know. You don't even know. Like, you know, some people need prebiotic fiber, so you can get that from tendons and things like that. People are concerned about their kidneys, so I'm learning about that and eating protein. Like, the whole autophagy thing and the OMAD, like all of that stuff will be in my book. Okay. I'm so excited. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Super excited that I did not publish it when I was supposed to. Now I just got you guys like, when is it coming out? But it's going to come out. 
I get egg allergies if I remove the whites. Um, the, the, the yolk still has um, the protein in it that you're reacting to, but much less. So some people can do yolks without any problem because it's much less of the protein. And some people can't eat any eggs at all. But nobody can just survive on the whites. So it reverses aging. Yes, Craig, it's amazing. Like, if I didn't do keto and I kept eating the standard American diet, Basically, Craig, I look younger today than I did when I was 35. For sure. For sure. 100%. Y'all know I've been on the internet a long time, so you can just go back freaking almost 10 years and look at me and see that doing keto has done me so well to protect my DNA through epigenetics. Collagen brand you like? Um, I don't like to... Uh, push the trend anymore because I realize that collagen has glutamate in it. It's giving people headaches. So, you know, some people really are doing great with chicken feet and oxtail and a broth. I do not suggest hydrolyzed powder because if you have a glutamate issue, boom, comes the headache hardcore. So that's why I don't talk about collagen anymore. And I used to, I used to, not anymore. I have no problem with collagen, but I do it from broth that I make, right? Oxtail, chicken feet, that's where you get good, you know, the, the end knuckle of the bone. The rib of a cow, what I'm talking about. That's the best part, that's the best part to make that broth. That rib, ain't nobody know that. Got more property up in there. <laughs> um, my husband also reversed his type two diabetes uh, his blood sugar went from 300, y'all listen to this, 300 down to 85 in two weeks doing keto. Mm -hmm. But like, you just got to get off the dirty keto. Just got to get off the dirty keto. Because that stuff will mess you up. And finally, it's slowing down this dirty keto thing because people are getting sick on it. We just needed time. Steph, Steph knew that a long time ago. Y'all food addicts had to find out for yourself that you get jacked eating all that nonsense nuts and freaking baby plants and that raw minerals from your body and all the phytic acid and preparing your food the wrong way and coffee. Does bone broth ha have any downside? Yes. Glutamine. Glutamate. Not glutamine. Glutamate. Monosodium glutamate. You know the stuff that's at the Chinese restaurants? MSG? That G part, some people get massive headaches from it, histamine reaction, blow up, feel sick on it. Some don't. It just depends on who has leaky gut. A lot of you guys have leaky gut. A lot of you guys have it. Craig's uh, father did the same in two weeks. Keto is awesome. Yes. Fructose is much worse than complex carbs in, for, uh, in the formation of uh, advanced glycation and product, which shows it. Yes, that is true. Well, really, really is a, is a burden to the liver, to be honest. A real burden to the liver. Because the amount of fructose, well, fructose and soda, but fructose and fruit, you have to get to the fiber. So then sugar might be more da dangerous. Everything's contextual, you guys. Fasting is not healthy. And like, people who promote it are so promoting garbage. Anybody, look at them. They start to look concentration camp victimish looking. Right? We need, you. when you start you eating your collagen because you're fasting, right? And your blood sugar goes haywire and your hair starts falling out because of thyroid issues. You have adrenal issues, you're tired. And men, your legs get really tiny and skinny. Don't fast. You don't need to fast. You don't need to fast. You need to fast, people. And people fast because they're obsessed with weight loss. Right? And they're not able to measure autophagy right now, the clearing and cleaning up a cell. So it's all theoretical. The practical and the real world with all the people that I've worked with who have fasted are sick. All of them. Everyone's like, yeah, I started feeling, having problems. Oh yeah, I had this problem and I had that problem. My hair started falling out and I started feeling tired all the time. And then I started losing my menstrual cycle. And then like my legs got really skinny. My skin started getting creepy and I started getting dark circles under my eyes from intermittent fasting, time-restricted feeding, and all of this garbage, okay? 
And I've been watching this channel on YouTube called The Lion Whisperer, and it's like awesome. And like people will ask the guy who hosts this channel, like, why do their lions do this? And when do they hunt? And why do they hunt? And all this kind of stuff. And he's like, you see, you guys, lions right now aren't going to go jogging. They're going to go lion. They're going to lie down on some grass because there's no kill. So they got to get some sleep. Got to get some resty poo because they depleted. And then they save their energy. And then when a caribou or, you know, a water buffalo comes by, then they pounce on that animal, chomp it up, bite the neck, kill it, feast until they're full, get really lazy, and just lie around and digest. But do we do that? Oh, no, 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 no. We go and chug the coffee to mask our tiredness. And then we start to develop second and third issues from that. Stephanie, have you uh, tested your long-term memory as I think it improves the hippocampus of the brain, which is sure one, what short, short-term short memory? The word record holder for memory is ketotic. No, I haven't. I haven't. My long-term memory, it's very interesting. For me, I'm always alert, right? I think my benefits here in the hippocampus is here to be alert. Like I'm so aware of everything. Like I sense everything, like nothing gets past me. That's what I've known it noticed because I could forget stuff and I can forget even words on the live stream. But although I am so, my brain is so overcrowded with information and, and, and talking to hundreds of people every day. Cause you all know that I'm sitting there getting back to you. Most of you, not all of you, because if you get 300 questions, questions a day and all the social media, the brain goes, I can't. There's almost, only so much data that I can hold in this brain. But my thing is to be sharp. Raw dairy is not okay with people with histamine intolerance and gut issues. Some people can handle it. I tried raw dairy before my gut went. <laughs> Plus, milk has too many carbs. But the keeper, no. I was like, oh, I got still a little gut dysbiosis because I took that key for my, my, I was pregnant on that. Ah. <laughs> so some can, some cannot. Sorry, what did you say about uh, fiber and fruit and fructose? I'm Spanish and I don't understand that part, slow motion. Okay, let me talk slower. Okay, fruit has been genetically modified to have more fructose. So man has made Frankenstein what manipulated our fruit to have more sugar in it, fructose. And then that fructose damages the liver and it messes with your blood sugar. And, but if you're eating it in the full form of fructose in an apple, then you have to get through the fiber to get to the fructose. But if you have an orange juice or a soda, that fructose is going to be filled up in the, in the, in the soda, in your Coca-Cola or your Sprite or your Fanta, your Fanta, it's going to have a lot of fructose in it. Now you're just drinking it. There's no fiber. So it can slam to the liver faster and create damage. Dairy has, no, that person was asking about raw. Raw doesn't, raw is pastured. They eat off the gra grass and there's no chemicals. Hopefully if they didn't put any chemicals on the grass. All histamine is matured, what, is, what? Also histamine is matured steak. Yeah, aged steak, exactly. Uh, the older, the worse the reaction. You have to be careful because it's like uh, people who use, like let's say the whole, I haven't done this for, you guys know I've got my, my meat fermenting. It doesn't have, uh, it's supposed to actually help with repopulating the gut. But like, yeah, aged meat, like salami and stuff like that is what gives you the histamine. Let me see, can an uh, anti-hay fever tablet get past this problem? For No, 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 no. Why would you use hay fever? It's like hard in the liver. No, what you wanna do is kidney because kidney will help with your diamine oxidase that deals with the histamine. Simple solution. And if you're not eating kidney, at least get DAO supplements from kidney. I haven't lost or de de desiccated. I haven't uh, lost any weight on carnivore. I've, you're not gonna. It's y'all. There's a science to losing weight to hormones. 
You can't just eat meat and be like, I'm not losing weight. You have a hormone problem. So then you have to figure that out. You know, people just get these things like, oh, I do carnivore to lose weight. You do carnivore, keto carnivore, to fix your gut and your autoimmune disorders. Clever. All right, guys. I said I was only going to go 30 minutes. I want an hour. And I, I get nervous because my Wi-Fi is so crappy in this apartment. But you know what? You can also listen to the audio. Because the audio, when I look at the replays, the audio seems to be fine. It's just the visual is crappy. So just play it while you're cleaning or something. <laughs> Thank you, Craig. Thank you. Uh, what's your view on different types of fasting? Fasting is garbage. Fasting is a trend. Fasting is the new anorexia. People do not do it for autophagy or to regulate their insulin. They do it to get lean. That's what they do. But what they do is they lose their legs, they lose their butt, they lose their boobs, they lose the collagen in their skin, they lose their cycle, they lose their thyroid function and their adrenal function. That's what you do fasting. You're not supposed to fast. I have no problem with intermittent fasting, but when you fast, rest. Lie in a hammock and read a book. Do not go to the gym and do your bills and work and run around fasting or else you're gonna frack your metabolism up because you're already coming from a jacked metabolism anyway. You're so gonna be here for the long time. I've already been, Craig. I've been longer than all these people online talking about keto and all this fasting crap. I've been along, Steph's been around a long ass time. Everybody have a great weekend, Deborah. Yep, I agree. No, I gotta go, because I'm getting like wired, jacked up, crazy, excited. Summertime. It's summertime. Uh, everybody working out on keto has to start at a different level. If you have adrenal fatigue, you gotta keep your workout short and you cannot train to failure. You can't do HIIT training, you can't do any explosive, you can't do cardio. You can. If you train as long as I do, then I've been working out for like 20 something, 23 years. And so I don't like to lift heavy anymore. I just like to train smart and take breaks and breathe and get my plumb line in order and get my ni nice sliding filaments, the actin and myosin cracking and my mitochondria happy. Actually, the workouts is too hard to explain when you're ending a stream. So I have to do a separate stream for that. If you do hide, is it, what? Hit, what? MCT is garbage. It's, 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 it's process nonsense. Thank you for the whole dollar, LS. Thank you. Thank you. You should ask the question. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you for being here. I don't know if you had to get rid of any. Deborah, did you have to get rid of any trolls? Or am I getting troll free now at this point? Tally gives you acne. So try lard or try ghee. I wonder why Tally's giving you acne. That's the first. That's the first. Later. Later, Craig. Or is it Craig saying later? Uh, Steve Finney and it said MC Toy. Is, yeah, it, well, it's just because Steve. Stephanie says, look, you guys just do the research. Stephanie says this. Steve says that. Blah, blah, blah says this. Who cares? You guys have to do your own due diligence and learn yourself, which is what I've done. It's hard to keep up keto because there's not much to eat. Coming from a true spoiled person. What do you mean? Did you know I lived in an African village for two months? And you know what they ate in that, that African village where they make a dollar a day? Rice and chicken. Next day, rice and chicken. Third day, rice and nasty ass chicken. I cannot believe when people talk like that. That's coming from a first world of absolute food addiction because I'm doing carnivore and I'm eating all kind of lovely, lovely meats. We got heart, we got tongue, we got kidney, we got freaking ribeye, mm, pork belly, jowl, oxtail, broth, butter, tallow, uh, uh, butter, tallow, and lard, duck fat if I want. We got all this yummy, yummy, lovely cuts, fish, salmon, sardines, and you tell me ain't nothing to eat? You should go back, you should go to Tanzania, Tanzania, to Sinza, to the village I was in, 
for two months and eat rice and, ch rice and chicken every day, and you'd be like, oh, there's so much to eat on keto. Especially if it's keto. If it's standard keto, you got all kind of veggie. You got all kind of stuff. So you guys, if you have that mentality, you will get stuck. We are lucky. We are lucky to not live in, 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 in object poverty. Only somebody coming from the first world will talk like that. Let some grass grass fed lamb, right? Meat turn a bit gray, lightly cooked in it. What? And what, even though I didn't season it, it tastes like salt. It, right? Yo, lamb. Mm. When I was in Australia, I had a lamb burger, and I was like, oh, I'm literally in heaven. It was so friggin' delish. The last thing I'm going to do is say there's not much to eat. I am grateful for the animals that that keep me alive and I am so grateful. I can't even I I can't even intellectualize and put it into words that I have the ability to eat well. Like it's everything. I'm so lucky. I will never complain about my food ever. I am so lucky. Facts. My, my family growing up in Kenya ate rice and stew, exactly, and certain vegetables and some fish rice stew on a daily basis from the, what, from the 46. Thank you, who grew up in Kenya. Even when I was in Sinza, though, I didn't see a single vegetable that time. Maybe it wasn't in season, but I didn't see it. It wasn't winter time, so that might have been it. So funny because when I was in South Africa, I, I was hanging out with my friend who's African. He's like, well, I'm from outside of, of uh, Johannesburg and I grew up on a farm and we ate seasonal vegetables and chicken. And he goes, but I didn't know how lucky I was because we didn't have enough money to go to McDonald's. We, we went to McDonald's, you know, they wanted McDonald's. He's like, cause that's status. So it's just, everything is the way we perceive reality in our head. Like some of you could be like, I hate her streaming. She talks to the, to the crowd too much. Another person could say, I love Stephanie. We all look at things differently. Steph, does peppercorn affect carb? Yes, it does. Sorry, Craig. Sorry, sorry, sorry. How many times a day do you eat? Well, I'm, I'm freaking eating fat all day long. So that could be like five times a day. But I'm not eating five meals a day. I'm eating about two. But I'm, I'm eating fat all day. Pre-workout, when I get up in the morning, a couple tablespoons, have a breakfast. Before I hit the gym, I'll have a couple more. And then I come home and have dinner. And I can even have more afterwards if, if I feel like it. Have more fat. Stephanie, did you get into any studies with Dominic D'Agostino? About what? He's a cancer. He, Dominic is a cancer specialist. That's it. He's not a, like, he, he knows himself. He don't know keto macros. He don't know keto macros. He doesn't know how to apply it to like individuals. He doesn't know about autoimmunity. Like he got, he, he can't say nothing about that. Dominic's brilliant. He's a very smart guy, but he doesn't know anything about everyday keto, like at all, period, point blank, period. That's it. And he's not even doing keto all the time. He's eating like, you know, carbs and stuff. No, no, <laughs> no. You guys, one thing I don't like about science is that science heads talk science. They don't talk real people. You know, they're not going to be like, oh, well, Sally tried carnivore and didn't lose weight. Or, you know, Shanika tried <laughs> omnivore and her hair started falling out. Like, they don't study that crap. Nor does Stephanie Jeff Bullock. They don't study any of that. They're just science heads. The big, huge science heads. Science, 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 science. That you don't understand what they're talking about. You know what I'm saying? It's like when I talk to Mike. Mike is so smart. But it's like, if you were to say, like, okay, Mike, we've got this 10 women, 10 men. These are their backgrounds. This is what they're going through. This is the individual. This is their history. How do you apply a ketogenic diet? I, I beg to say homeboy wouldn't know what to do. But Stephanie does. Cause I talk to these people all day, every day. And I've done it for years. And y'all know I talk. So I talk to these people. I'm not like, oh, ting. Your hour, hour's up. Thank you for the money. Bye. No, I don't do that. <laughs> 
You're my go-to person for keto. Thank you, Craig. I appreciate it. Um, there was answering. I see keto is amazing for arthritis. I have severe crippling rheumatoid arthritis, and my pain is all gone now that I've gone keto. That's what I love about Deborah. See, Deborah, who helps moderate this channel, she will talk. Deborah's got rheumatoid arthritis. People with this crippling autoimmunity disease have surgeries a whole life. Joints get all fracked up, inflammation everywhere, creating skin skin issues, all type of issues. So yeah, like she, she's like, she real deal, y'all. Let me see how to break how to break a plateau while on keto. I don't. I need to know more about you. Been way too overweight, lose, stall, lot. Okay, you guys, I can't answer questions if I don't know nothing about you. How am I supposed to answer? I'm stalling. Y'all trip me out here on the internet. It is bizarre. How do I? I don't know who you are. I don't know what, how how old you are. I don't know your lifestyle. I don't know how you. I don't. I don't know when you fart. I don't want to take a poop. I don't know if you're constipated, loose stool, floating stool. I don't know if you have any pain. I don't know if you don't sleep well. I don't know what you binge. I don't. I don't know if you drink alcohol. I don't know if you came from from a history of eating taken for. I don't know nothing. So if you're stalling, it's probably because you're doing something wrong. But because I don't know, I can't say it. I'm only guessing. Stephanieperson.com. Deborah's reminding you guys if you want to sign up for something that I'm offering because I got a lot of information here. Rice carbs, so it's okay to eat rice and no, it's only for people who can't do keto. Rice would be something, and it's about a cup a day split up, maybe a fourth cup throughout the day, or one third three times a day, something like that. Um, and that's for people who've got thyroid issues and they, they they can't adapt, they can't sleep. I'm like, if you can't get your stress down and you can't sleep and your glycogen is depleted and you don't have enough ketones, you're gonna have to sit on low carb until you get your life in order. Until you get your life in order, you might have to sit on low carb, which is still carbs, starches, no sugars, starches. So it really depends on the individual as well, how big you are, how much carbs, less, blah, 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 blah. But I like to put people around 80 carbs a day who, before they transition into keto. All right, guys, time for me to go because I am over an hour. How did I do this? I'm an hour and a half. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot because I'm sure the stream is really glitchy. Oh, well, listen to the audio, you guys. Now I gotta go. Thank you, Deborah, for being my moderator. It, it's almost seven o'clock at night. Y'all got me going. Uh, is carnivore better than traditional keto? No. Uh, no. Um, I would say keto carnivore is better than traditional keto with plants. Yes. Um, but you can oscillate between the two, especially seasonally. That's one thing that Mike and I agreed on was <laughs> seasonal plants. Oh, spit. If you don't have a gut dysbiosis, no glitches. Oh, Deborah, it's on the replay. You can't see. Nobody on the... on. People on the stream can't see the glitch and whatever. Thank you everybody who donated to the super chat. Thank you everybody who liked up the stream. And now I gotta go. All right, and I will record more videos breaking down this long stream that's probably bad Wi-Fi. Don't forget to go to my Instagram, which is Stephanie Ketogenic, or if you want a course learning super cheap membership or a consultation, which is also super cheap, go to stephaniepersoncom and I'll hook you up, okay? And if you want free information, sit here or go to my Instagram or Stephanie, the business person on my Facebook, which is all free. It's my fan page. Okay. We will compare numbers. I love you. Ah, thank you so much, Mr. Craig. And I, now I gotta go. This is a business I'm almost 52 years of age. And, uh, I, I love it. I don't love the sirens though. I will get out of this noisy mess soon one day. Bye guys, thank you, bye. Be looking out for my interview on high intensity health, but it's probably gonna be a couple weeks because he's gotta edit it. Okay, bye guys. Like up the stream.